OK, we're going to take a look at manipulating channels in the iPad version of Affinity Photo. So to get to the Channels Studio, on the right hand side here we want this icon. And at the top here we have the overall document composite channel makeup. So we've got composite red, composite green, composite blue and composite alpha. Now underneath you'll see we have background red, green, blue and alpha. And these are layer specific channels. So they change depending on which layer you have selected in the Layers Studio. So what we can do is just simply tap each composite layer to isolate it in editing. And what this means is that any tools and filters that we use apply only to that channel. So for example, if I've isolated the composite blue channel here, and if I go ahead and pick up the dodge brush, Let's set a higher opacity and increase the brush width. And I can just brush into the C here, like so. OK, and then to reset the initial channel view, we can just use the reset icon up here. Now you'll see that we've deepened the blue tones in the C here. Let's just take a look, if I step back, at what would happen if I just applied this to every channel simultaneously. Not quite the same effect, is it? So just another thing is that by default, when we isolate the channels, we get a grayscale representation. However, what we can do is just reset the channel view again. And instead, I can just tap the little pencil icon next to the channels that I don't want to isolate. So if I only want to isolate the blue channel, I just make sure the pencil icon is disabled for all the other channels. And there we've just got our composite blue channel that we're now editing. So again, with the dodge brush, I can just go in and we can see here, because we're only dodging on the blue channel now, we get a nice rich blue tone. All right, let's check out another use. So I'll open up another image here. And this time, if I go into the Channels Studio once again, I've got these little context options next to each channel. And if we have a look at the layer specific channels, we have options here, including creating a grayscale layer, a mask layer, and also creating a spare channel. So let's take a look at a potential use for this. We've got a sunset image here, and the Sky is a bit noisy. Now the sky is mostly comprised of blue tones. So what we'll do to kind of cut down on the amount of noise is we'll use what's called a bilateral blur filter, but we'll mask it to just the blue channel. So if I find layer background blue here, tap the icon for more options, and then I choose create spare channel down here. We'll see our spare channel has been created. So next, I want to add my bilateral blur. And to do that, I'll go across to the Filter Studio. I'll find bilateral blur. And I know roughly what values I want to set. So for radius, I'll set that to 9 pixels. And then tolerance, I'll leave at 15%. So if we just have a preview here, we can see it's smoothed out the noise. But we're also affecting the foreground quite significantly, and we're losing a lot of fine detail on the trees in the background here. So next step is to convert this to a live filter layer. Now to do that, we tap the little live filter layer icon down here. We get a performance warning. Just tap yes to confirm. And on the layer studio, we'll see we've now got a bilateral blur live filter. So making sure this layer is selected, we'll move across to the channels studio. And remember how I said the layer channels are specific to each layer? Well, this time we don't have red, green, and blue. We only have alpha for the bilateral blur. So what we want to do now is apply this channel to that alpha channel. And to do this, it's really easy. We just tap the icon here next to the spare channel that we created and choose load to bilateral blur alpha. And as we can see, the foreground foliage clears up, we get a bit more detail back there, whilst the sky is still being affected by that filter. And here's a little tip, just at any point, 
If you want to take away the alpha information and just make the alpha 100% opaque, you can tap next to the relevant layers alpha channel and then just choose fill. So there we go, the filter is now back to affecting each area of the image equally. Okay, let's try something else then. So one other thing that we can do with channels is you'll notice we had options here to create a grayscale layer. So then, let's use this with a blend mode. Now I'm going to preview or cycle through the different channels. I think I prefer red because it has the most contrast between the waves and the rocks here. So having previewed composite red, I can reset the channels and then I will tap next to background red and choose create grayscale layer. Now, if I move across to the layer studio, there's our new pixel layer based off the red channel information. So on the more dialog for that layer, we can then set a blend mode. So I can scrub through and try and find the right one, but I think I'll settle on something like overlay. There we go. So by taking the channel that has the most obvious contrast in the image and then creating a grayscale copy of it, which we can then tweak with a blend mode, it enables us to create quite a desaturated, contrasty look to the image. Again, here's the before and after. So there we go, really, just a few tips for using channels in photo. Hope you found that helpful. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials.